Hi, thanks for watching this short video. Today we're gonna to be talking to you about common problems with AFO braces. These walking aids can be excellent, but that doesn't mean they're perfect. Uh, scenarios come up that challenge them. We need to talk about that here so you know how to address a problem that you may have with an AFO brace, okay? There's different styles, but we're gonna start with shoes. Shoes, you have to be able to fit the AFO brace into a shoe that works. And we're gonna talk about prices, styles, things like that below that we found work well. You don't have to go with what we're saying, but there's different styles of shoes that some people love. And so we're gonna talk about that. We're not recommending one over the other, for example, but just check it out and see what you think. Common problem that people actually have with an AFO is being able to get it into a shoe. So sometimes a shoehorn can go a long way. There are different kinds of shoehorns. Depends on which one you like. There are some shoehorns that actually, and we'll show this in the blog post below, the shoehorn can clip onto the back of the shoe. So you don't even have to operate that with one hand and then use the AFO with the other. You don't have to do that. So it's always on there. So it's just an option. Sometimes you don't even need a shoehorn. Sometimes you can actually just kind of rotate the back of the shoe and the the AFO can fit inside the shoe easily that way. We're getting a proper pair of shoes, it fits. It almost goes without saying, but it's important in this video, so we're gonna talk about that. You have to be able to get a pair of shoes that works. Now, just because the shoes look great on the outside doesn't mean they're gonna be perfect for your AFO. The shoe has to be able to accommodate something more than just your foot, and usually it's th only 3 16ths of an inch thick, these AFOs. But some shoes out there, super tight dress shoes, you, you might have a problem with that. If your favorite pair of very tight dress shoes is more important, then you might have a problem. You have to wear these uh, AFOs usually inside of a shoe. And the only time that you don't is when it's a metal AFO incorporated into a shoe already. Basically, you always have to wear these things inside of a shoe because the walking aid be could become the reason why you slip. And you don't want that, obviously, right? Think about your shoes. Think about how snug your shoes are. Big deal. That's a big deal. You don't want to be slipping around inside the shoe. Sometimes people have shoelaces for their convenience, but then you could slip around inside of this uh, shoe. That can cause a shear problem, which just means you're rubbing uh, friction, and that can be an issue for you. So that's basically it when it comes to shoes. So shoes are needed, but you have to have the right kind of shoes, and it's not too hard to find that, okay? But super tight dress shoes can be a deterrent for people to use an AFO. Also, their hand strength, they have to be able to use their hands to either put the brace on first and then into the shoe, or you put the brace into the shoe and then slide down into the AFO and shoot together. Some people love it that way, some people don't. Hand strength shoes is definitely what you have to think about, and also your skin. If there's an issue with your skin, you need to know. Some people can't feel their feet. Some people can't articulate the issue, okay? But your eyes can tell you how you're feeling if you can't feel that, the rubbing sensation. So if there's a red mark, there's different kinds of red marks. There's mild, moderate, or severe. If the red mark from the brace doesn't go away very quickly within 15, 20 seconds, something like that, then you could potentially have an issue. Perhaps that time frame should be extended out a little bit more to uh, even up to a minute. But if you have a, an angry spot, like on your foot, you have to let your orthotist know that. You have to let your podiatrist know that. A lot of times what they can do is actually add padding to a spot or what they do something called heat relieving it and they can push out that spot for you. Just a consideration. Now that's all good when you're talking about a plastic AFO, but there are also things that we have to talk about with carbon AFOs, which are gaining some popularity and for good reason. So those are very lightweight. Oftentimes it's a prefabricated design, which might work great for you, but it might not. Everyone's limb is shaped slightly different and the crest of your tibia, the very front part of that is very sensitive. Although a uh, carbon AFO might be very lightweight, it might press on that bone, you might not like that. They do have the positive feature of being able to fit inside of shoes more easily because it's extremely thin. But with custom AFOs, you can actually get more options. Okay, so you have to think about which one you like the best and have a discussion with your orthotist about it or your podiatrist beforehand. There are also other kinds of AFOs called Arizona AFOs. Okay, so we've now mentioned the three basic types, Arizona, plastic AFOs, and carbon AFOs. So Arizona style AFOs, you have to be able to lace something up. Sometimes it's no problem for people, but sometimes if you have hand strength issues, that's, that's a problem. 
These are some of the issues that people have with an AFO brace. Also, check out our blog post on different styles of socks, actually. Believe it or not, socks can go a long way for someone. You'd be surprised at how much your foot perspires per day. So socks really come into play if you're wearing something around your foot and ankle all day long to help you walk better. So I hope this information helped you. Check out our blog post below. We're going to really try to go into the common areas that are an issue. And I hope this information helped you. Thanks.